Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. This one's going to be about the habits that keep the godly man weak. I'm going to be speaking through experiences, my shortcomings, and also even things, maybe the things that I, haven't, I didn't fall short to, but the Bible where many strong men were slayed and destroyed through things that these bad habits that even in today's age, a lot of us men struggle with, okay? And number two, guys, number two, I can't wait to go on that. So stick around. If you guys are liking the content, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. All right, the number one thing that keeps the man of God weak, that keeps you godly men weak, guys, is having no prayer life, okay? Having no prayer life. Uh, in Luke chapter 18, verse one, it says, man ought to pray and not to faint, because that's Christ, Christ said that. When you're not having an active prayer life, you're more prone to falling into your temptations. You're more prone to falling back into sin because when you have an active prayer life, you're, it's like you're in tune with the Spirit. And we all know what, what Galatians says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. It says that um, if you, the more you feed your spirit, the more your spirit gets elevated, the more you, the more you, you're gonna start growing spiritually. But the more you start, to, you start to drift away from spiritual things, it starts to serve your flesh and carnality. And then now, you know, you find yourself more into a deep pit into sin. So you want to have a prayer life. The Bible says to pray without kissing. So just you know, ha constantly being in prayer. And if you don't know what to pray about, Christ says in Matthew chapter six, verse nine to thirteen. Also, if you could just give, you know, thanks to God, giving thanks to God for everything He's done into your life. So always, guys, have a prayer life. Keeps you in tune with the Spirit. Keeps your spirit filled. Okay. Number two, the number two habit, the number the second habit that keeps godly men weak is chasing. Okay, chasing and simping over women. Okay, this is the one thing, and I, I'm not going to be hypocrite because when I was in my 20s, I just turned 30. When I was in my 20s, I, I my early mid 20s, I would used to do that a lot, and I see a lot of men in their 20s, in their 20s, doing the same thing too. And I wish though I could see the old me and I could just like shake, like I, like slap them <laughs> because it's like all the time you waste chasing after a woman. Listen, guys, I know a lot of you brothers, you want a, you want a wife. You want to start a family, you want to have children, um, you want to be fruitful and multiply. I understand that. But what you want to do as a man, you want to just continue doing the God's will in your life, focus on your purpose, which I'm going to talk about in a bit, and then God will bring the woman into your life. Okay, Literally, God will bring to, uh, the woman to your life. The Bible says, whoever shall find the wife uh, gains favor of the Lord. Okay, So always keep that in mind. You out here chasing women, that's, that's a death trap. That is literally a death trap. Especially so sipping over a woman. Okay, we could blame the woman today, you know, about being uh, pretty much a heartless prostitute, the OnlyFans. But who's paying for the OnlyFans? It's the man. Okay, 99% of it is men doing that. Okay, so keep in mind, man, all that, do, all that, bro, that got to be done. Okay, now the godly men, I mean, hopefully you don't, you don't subscribe to OnlyFans and stuff like that. But chasing women, guys, uh, being on day naps all day, swiping left and right, going out to the to the club just in, for the sole purpose of looking for a woman or you know going out to parties that is a death trap i'm telling you guys it's a waste of time complete waste of time all that time could be used to build yourself up as a man okay seeking god's kingdom and his righteousness and god will add things into your life okay so as you're seeking god's kingdom you're seeking his righteousness you're departing from your willful sin you're you know striving for obedience god will add things into your life whether it's a wife now that's it's his timing okay so it could be Years from now, months from now, you know who knows. Only only the most I knows. But in that in that process of you uh, waiting to get your wife and you know family and stuff like that, work, build, being out here chasing these women, chasing these women who don't even like you, chasing these women who are, you know who are talking to five, ten dudes at a time, which is most of them. You're just wasting your time, man. Okay, so as you start to work, and you're it's like crazy too. I know a lot of you blurs can relate to me, right? You're out here, you know, working, you know, doing what you got to do. You're not really, you're not really caring about women. And that's when they just pop up. But when you're out here chasing women on these day naps and, you know, out looking out in the streets, looking out, you notice how you get to put an extra effort and you don't really have much success. But when you're focusing on you, it's like they just want to just all come, you know, like a flock. <laughs> and that's how it is. And that's how it should be. You shouldn't be out here just do, wasting your time chasing women. Let them come to you. Let them chase you. Okay. All right. So that's number two. Chasing woman, sipping after woman. Okay, we've seen what happened to Samson. Okay, we've seen what happened to Solomon, messing around with strange women. So when you do get, when when you do get, because nothing wrong with dating a woman, getting a relationship one. Make sure that she serves the Most High too. Make sure that she understands what your purpose is on life, and she respects that, and she's willing to help you because that's what women are created to be—to be a helpmate to your life. Okay, to be a helpmate to your life. All right, number three is this is the number one thing. I made a video talking about how I fell short of God's glory and everyone was like, oh, Mark, it was lust. It was this and that, which it wasn't. It had nothing to do with lust. But 
Uh, so I, that just lets me know that a lot of men are struggling with that because that's just a projection. That, because most men, they do struggle with, you know, the corn addiction. They're masturbating, you know, the lust. And the Bible says that, you, you know, he who commit, um says that in James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15. I'll leave a verse on the screen. I don't want to say that wrong. But, you know, lust is death, pretty much. And when you find yourself dabbling in the pornography, uh, dabbling in masturbation, and I, I have many solutions for you, brothers, because that was once me. I made a video um, a couple days ago talking about how I was, I used to watch that stuff for 12 years straight. Okay. And that's, you know, one thing that kept me in bondage. And, you know, as I started to pray and ask God for, you know, you know, help me overcome this flesh, you know, what can I do to, to overcome this sin, this addiction? And it's, it was semen retention. Okay. It was semen retention. It's funny enough. That's how my channel blew up. So it's like God rewarded me. I was on semen retention for about three years. And God rewarded me for that. And I was able to, you know, through my Seamers experiences I dealt with, you know, the, the spiritual warfare, the testimony, all that. It was like God rewarded me for that. And I was able to help other men, other brothers out there who struggle. Because like I said, we all, you know, we all struggle with lust of the flesh. Okay. Every single human does, man or a woman. Okay. And semen retention, for those who don't know what that is, is pretty much giving up corn, is giving up masturbating, uh, pretty much just living like a monk. Like a, it's called, they call it monk mode. And what that is, is no drugs, no alcohol, and you're just focused on your purpose because now, now it's no longer, and when you're on monk mode, it's all about building your spirit back up, okay? When, when, you, weren't, when, you, when you weren't doing that, you find yourself down in the pit, okay? It's, but you know, it's like Steve Retention will like build, build you back up as a man. Now slow, not, not overnight, but slowly but surely. The more you, the more you retain, the more you, you know, stay away from those websites, get, uh, unsubscribe to the OnlyFans, uh, not only that, unfollow, you know, all the IG tater tots, okay? Unfollow them all. Anyone, any woman or any, any, any person who is making you fall into your, you know, to your, your carnality, let them go. Cut them off, okay? So, lust, uh, corn, masturbating, you know, all that's going to keep you weak. All that's going to make you more for like a beta male, you know? Like, you just feel like a emasculated man. And that's, and that's why, guys, corn is free, Okay, the devil knows he wants he wants to make sure that it's free. Okay, so you could destroy yourself as a man. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. We gotta fight it off. That should be one of the sins, you know, corn and masturbating. One of those sins that should be fought falling off, man. Just to completely remove it out of your life. All right. Number four is keeping company with the ungodly. The reason why this is so key, this is so important, because ungodly people you're going to fall into more temptations, okay? Choosing the wrong friends, the wrong friendships. And I have testimony after testimony, the wrong friends in my life who, you know, and some of them believe in God, you know, quote, unquote, believe in God, were church people, you know. Uh, but like I said, the Bible says a test, you know, like the Bible says, the Bible says to test people's spirits. It's because they call themselves a Christian or whatever they, whatever title they, they give themselves. It doesn't really mean much, okay? So when you keep coming with the ungodly, how they live their life, okay, their fruits. You know, you know a tree, you know a man by his fruits, okay? So when you keep company with the ungodly, you're going to fall into more temptations. You're going to fall into more snares. You're going to fall into more deceit. You're going to fall into more sin. They're going to keep you in darkness, okay? Remember, evil communications corrupt good matters. This is the truth. 100% the truth. Okay, that's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 to 34. Okay, so always keep that in mind. All you godly men, the people who are not striving for righteousness, the people who don't want nothing to do about the narrow path, the people who want nothing to do about Christ, the Most High, and, you know, you know, loving Him with all your heart and really being about this walk, not just being religious, but actually loving God with your actions. Okay, those are the type of people, guys, the ungodly. You just got to cut them off, right? Number five. Remember, this is what a lot of men struggle with, I'm seeing, okay? Having pride, okay? Having, you know, being arrogant and being self-righteous, okay? We all know that pride comes before the fall. So pride, it even says that a man's pride will, will keep him low. That's in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. So humble yourself. What's the solution to that? Being humble, okay? Don't, don't think you're better than anybody. Don't be jealous and envious of the next man because maybe he's on a higher level than you. Don't do that. Okay, this is going to keep you weak. This will keep you low. Okay, being self-righteous, thinking that you're better than other people, maybe because you sin less than them. Because the Bible says that if a man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay, so just because you might sin less than they do, okay, or maybe you're not in willful sin, don't try to, don't try to be prideful and act like, you know, belittle them or belittle her because you feel like you're, you're better than because you, you are maybe more holier, quote-unquote, more holier than more pure, okay? Uh, I see this a lot, you know. The, the pride, it, it, that's a deadly sin, guys. That has to go. And this marker 
is done. <laughs> Once again, guys, a barker is done. But yes, guys, having pride, the arrogancy, you know, like I said, guys, the solution to all this is being humble. The Bible says that God exalts those who humble themselves, okay? And the Bible also says that God resists the proud. He resists the prideful people, the arrogant people, and the self-righteous people. He resists that them, but he gives grace to the humble, okay? He gives grace to the humble. So always keep that in mind, man. Number six, number six, man, is being lazy and slothfulness, okay? About chasing after your purpose, okay? Or just good to be, you know, just being lazy and slothful in general too. Also, gluttony, okay? When you're lazy and slothful, that op you know, we all know sl uh, slothfulness is one of the deadly sins. That opens up the door for the other deadly sin is gluttony. Find yourself overeating, okay? Bit overeating. And that's why in America, I believe the population, I think it's over 30% or probably more than that. I looked it up years ago, so I'm pretty sure it's more than that. That was before the Lovid happened, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that was over 30% of people over, uh, overweight. It's probably definitely more than that too, okay? And just being lazy, being slothful, not on their purpose, okay? The Bible says that the idle hands shall suffer hunger, okay? It even says that a man that's in love of pleasure shall be a poor man. So you got to work. You got to work. When being lazy, being on, playing the video games all day, there's nothing wrong with playing video games. But when you find yourself playing video games more than your purpose, that's a red flag, okay? Being slothful, you know, you know that you got work to do. But you're just binge watching. You're on TikTok all day. You're on uh, Twitter all day, Instagram all day, YouTube all day. You know, and there's time where you gotta work. And see, keep in mind, you can watch these type of videos on YouTube, and you can work at the same time. I'm always working and watching videos. If I'm not listening to if I'm not listening to music, just watching you know YouTube videos. You know, so do that. Be productive. You know, get gym membership. Go on walks. Find a hobby that you love to do. You know, there's so much things to do as a man in 2023. Don't be distracted out here, guys. Like I said, a lot, a lot, Satan wants a lot of you men distracted by the wrong things, celebrity gossip, uh, you know, get, you know, chasing these females, all the wrong things, guys. So keep that in mind. Being lazy and slothfulness, you know, that has to go. And gluttony too, that's also one of the deadly sins, overeating. Okay, it's time to do some fasting and some prayer. Okay, fasting is key when it comes to overcoming all of this, but especially gluttony too. Okay, number seven is being a slave to your flesh. Okay, when you're a slave to your flesh, like I said at the beginning of this video, that you know, whoever's um, the, the Bible, Christ says that whoever is a serv uh, whoever commits sin is a servant of sin. Okay, and the more you're a slave to the flesh, the more you're like weakening it and decaying your spirit and destroying your spirit because you're not paying any attention to it. You're not watering it. You're not nurturing it, but you're watering your flesh. You're watering your sin. You're just increasing your sin. That's going to keep you weak. Okay, that's going to keep you weak. Don't be fooled by all these social media influencers and gurus who, you know, tell you how to be the strong alpha male, but they're not backing anything with the Bible. They're not backing anything with the scriptures or with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, okay? These people are deceivers, okay? So in order to be a godly man, in order to strive for righteousness, you need the most high in your life, okay? Or be an alpha male, like everyone says, you need to have Christ as your head, okay? Because remember, Christ was the first and last alpha male, okay? So always keep that in mind. These are the seven habits that will keep the godly man weak, man. Having no prayer life, chasing and sleeping after women, lust, corn, and masturbating, keeping company with the ungodly. Five is having pride, arrogancy, and self-righteousness. Number six is being lazy, slothful about chasing your purpose. And number seven is being a slave to your flesh, okay? So I hope you guys get edified from this video. If you haven't already, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm out. God bless you all. Peace.